Ah, the space race, an incredible time that saw the United States stole the Soviet Union for the future of space exploration. Contrary to what most people think, the space race didn't end with Neil Armstrong setting foot on the moon. Right up until the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Soviets were well on their way to having a formidable opponent to NASA's space shuttle. The Soviet shuttle program was called Buran, or Snowstorm in Russian. This program was one of the largest and most expensive projects the Soviets ever developed. Now as you can see, there are some remarkable similarities to its American counterpart. This even extended to how it was transported when not in use. The Soviets built the massive Antonov 225 to carry the shuttle around, just like NASA's 747. One difference was during testing, while the Americans used 747 to hoist the shuttle Enterprise up to around 20 to 30,000 feet for flight test, Soviet engineers cut out the middleman, so to speak, and bolted the jet engines directly to the shuttle and let it take off under its own power. Hey, that's not the Buran. That's better. But it was no laughing matter when, in November of 1988, the Buran Orbiter launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. The shuttle did make it to orbit where it circled the Earth twice in three hours before finally returning home. Another difference from the American shuttle, the Buran Orbiter was unmanned and completely automated. It is still the largest craft of its kind to have completed such a journey. Sadly, like most things from the 1980s, the Buran was a one-hit wonder. Now with the collapse of the Soviet Union, the program was mothballed. Adding insult to injury, the Buran experienced the second collapse when a hangar holding one of the orbiters also collapsed. Several efforts to revive the program have also failed. But that is not the end of Buran's story. The Soviets were building a much larger fleet than NASA. A dozen shuttles were under construction when the program was cancelled. Half of them were either dismantled or destroyed. The others are still around today and even on display across Russia in either museums or an amusement park. Two of the remaining shuttles sit completely abandoned back at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. An intrepid group of urban explorers snapped a haunting set of photos of the forgotten shuttles. One of them, commissioned with the name Ptichka, was 97% complete. Now it is sat for the last two decades covered in dirt and dust, waiting for its final instruments to be installed. I can't help but to compare and contrast those shuttles' predicaments with their American counterparts. Our shuttles were retired to great fanfare, flown and paraded through our larger cities and proudly put on display in places of honor. But the Russian shuttles are barely a footnote, hardly known outside of Russia and even the history books. Tichka, Russian for Little Bird, was slated to be the second shuttle flown, and I find it a little ironic that a shuttle named Little Bird would be so close to flying, but never get a chance to spread its wings. Hey, thanks for watching the air show. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below.